I had to comment this morning when I got up and I seen the reaction on social network, well, Facebook and X, you know, just regarding the whole the whole thing about celebrities and gaslighting the public. Um, and, you know, for some context, right, I had been thinking about what, you know, the church had been doing when Alan Scott says that he could see people's sins, you know, that he could look at you almost like a, cl- a clairvoyant, you know, and tell you your deepest, darkest sins and secrets, right? And so this clip here is the BBC using, you know, they, they definitely troll the public, right? And survivors that are in the know, and some of the people that have been in the inside of this, some of us know people that work on the crew, or people that have acted there, or we've got cousins and aunties and blah, 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 right? As you know, Scotland's a small place. <laughs> everybody knows everything about everybody. So... You know, Janie Godley's playing this part in River City, as I call it, right? Sorry, no offence to all the working actors out there on the BBC, but I don't watch BBC soap operas, right? And I know a lot of people do, so I don't mean to offend people, right? But for me, I can't, I couldn't think of anything worse than sitting watching soap operas or football. <laughs> so... My telly, I, don't, I, I just, I'll leave the telly unless there's something really, really good online on Netflix or something like that. Then I'll allow myself to be influenced by it. But this is why I don't, right? Because they try to get into your head, <laughs> just like the church and the false prophets. And they're scam merchants. So I'm going to shut up now and just let it play out. Here for the context, right? Psychics really bother me as well because... They prey on people just when they're at that point of grieving, you know, in their lives. When they're absolutely vulnerable, you know, and they're, they're like grief touristy vampires, we call them, you know. Um, and it, t- to have that power, they feel this this tremendous dopamine and um, control over you uh, that you're hanging on their every word as though they're a channel for your dead relative, I mean, it really is the most vile, despicable thing to do to somebody. And the media push these people as though this is real and it hangs, and it's it's never been real. And it's the same with prophecy, right? Let's see where these prophecies went, you know, in the movement, when it came to Paul Kane and and different other people, and Sharon Collins, Abraham... Uh, well, whatever her name is, um, who told Rab Elliot that he was going to have sons like vines around his table. You know, false prophets, thus saith the Lord. You know, what, what, what are you doing there? You're positioning yourself as something that you're fucking no. Oh my God. I would like to be you for all the tea in China. And you've had a tough time recently, honey. I'm looking at you and your aura's all dull. And I'm thinking you've been visited by a spirit recently. And he's here with me just now. And do you know what? He was quite angry when he passed over. And he was a wee bit upset because he felt that it was the wrong time and you were with him at the end. But there is no wrong time. The time that you go is the time for your passing. And he wants you to know it's okay. It's okay to go on. It's okay to live. Am I making sense? Well, he's okay now and he's gonna pass on. He won't be back. Well, that's me. I'm all out of spirits. I think I'm spent. Can I have a treble gin and tonic, please? Did he sign Elvis then? Yeah. He did. He had a wee Pete Croon and he was going to sing Jailhouse Rock and dedicate it to that nae good son of yours in Berlin. But he changed his mind. You go get the gin. Snap, snap, put some ice in it. See that? <clears throat> that is the power of the gangster. I know everything about you. Everybody's told me about you. The spirits have told me about you. God's told me about you. Um, and really, this is what's going down. How was I? Fantastic. You always were. Mm-hmm. 
I'm a married man. Ah, could have done it all time's sake. It's brilliant. As ever. You should have seen their faces. What a team. We should do that again. You know, another wee ear. Terrible acting, by the way. <clears throat> I know people say you shouldn't really speak early the dead, but there's so thousands of victims. People that were almost pushed to suicide, some of them, by this woman. Um, and her daughter, who, you know, definitely was sort of pressurised into coming into the whole celebrity BBC thing, which, for me, unforgivable. How could you Wigan do session, some insider knowledge. We could make a few quid. I don't know. don't want people getting suspicious. Did it do the trick? I think so. Great God entertainment, eh? So many things you told me, though. I never tell you anything about Lydia's da and all that. Tricks of the trade, my friend. <laughs> I better get going. You take care, okay. Matt. Yeah. And you, Lenny, what I said about those tormented souls, I meant it. You should change your ways. <laughs> you forget about it. The problem goes away. You forget about it. You sleep at night. You couldn't be more wrong. That's Janie using the BBC to threaten her ex-gangster pals, you know. You know, she, they said that they were ex-gangsters, but they behaved online as though they were anything but. I've never met an ex-gangster. And I've met a few gangsters because they married into my family and I had um, no choice but to be sort of exposed to these people, you know. It's one of the things I'm like, you know, if I ruled the world, <laughs> I wouldn't like gangsters or celebrities have children, but that's just me. BBC gaslighting, bogeymen, false prophets, and people that have got secrets, old BBC people. You know, because they were maybe up the Great Eastern one night taking advantage of some young, vulnerable people. Because there's a lot of them, you know, it happened up at Blue Triangle in Govan, where there was sort of celebrities getting in and taking advantage of the young people that were in care. And that was witnessed by myself and Luanne Duval from Washington, who used to be actually a secretary to the president, believe it or not, Alex Gillis. Um, had, you know, the church and govern and she'd come all the way over for Washington. And it was just so, by coincidence, that she moved in through the back for me and Eluth Street and I was in Taranza Street. And we had a great um, grapevine down there. Let's just put it that way. I'll just leave it there at that. Don't let the BBC gaslight you. <laughs> 